Hey guys, Roy here from Roy Cruz Photo, and today I am coming to you from my living room, more specifically my couch. But uh, don't worry, it's not that kind of video. I'm just trying to stay warm because it's still pretty cold here in Korea. But uh, we'll be going out to shoot later, so stay tuned for that. Today's video is about a hobby that I've been enjoying for the past couple of years, and that hobby is collecting vintage lenses and using them with my Fujifilm X system. The lenses I'm going to be talking about today are M42 screw mount lenses. Now M42 was a standard used by various manufacturers over several decades until the 1980s. And these manufacturers include Pentax, um, Vivitar, Zeiss, and even Fujifilm. And the great thing about M42 is that you can purchase many of the lenses quite cheaply now. Now, of course, you can mount many different kinds of lenses onto your mirrorless camera systems these days, including Canon, Nikon, Olympus, and even Leica. But I chose M42 because of the cost. M42 is one of the cheapest ways to experience many different kinds of lenses without breaking the bank. Now, you may be wondering why anyone would want to do that. Why would you put old glass onto your modern mirrorless camera? Well, there are several reasons why I do it. Number one, uh, M42 lenses are relatively cheap and they are a great way to play with the various focal lengths uh, without spending too much money. Reason number two is M42 lenses can be adapted to many different camera mounts. So even if you switch systems in the future, you can still use the same lenses uh, on your future bodies. Now I personally have adapters for my Fujifilm system as well as my Canon full frame system. So I can jump between systems whenever I want. Reason number three, a lot of the M42 lenses are built like tanks. They have great mechanical and build quality and all of the M42 lenses that I've tried uh, are a pleasure to use. Reason number four, it is just a whole lot of fun to use these lenses. And like I said, you don't need to spend a lot of money to experience various different focal lengths that you've been wanting to try. Now that being said, there are several reasons why someone might not want to use M42 lenses or vintage lenses for that matter. Number one, there is no autofocus. These lenses are manual focus only, so you will need to get used to nailing that focus uh, manually. But fortunately with uh, mirrorless technology these days, there is focus peaking and various other focus aids that will help you get that focus. And with enough practice, you will get faster and faster at focusing. Now reason number two why someone might not want to use vintage lenses is that they are, of course, older technology and older design. Now that means these lenses are rarely as clinically sharp as modern lenses that you can get these days. and. Um, also, the old lens technology and old design might make them more prone to lens flare as well as chromatic aberration. They definitely do give you that vintage look sometimes, and for some photographers, that is great. And reason number three why some people might be turned off with vintage lenses, M42 lenses, on mirrorless systems is that the adapters can be a little bulky. Now, this is because the distance between the rear lens element and the sensor uh, needs to be compensated for. So there is a distance requirement that needs to be met and that can sometimes make the adapter bulky. Now speaking of adapters, there are many kinds of adapters available today. Uh, some adapters like these simply connect one mount to another kind of mount. There are no optics inside and they basically just connect the lens to the body. There are other adapters that add functionality, just like the speed boosters, but we won't be talking about those today. We will just be talking about the basic adapters that simply connect the lens to the camera. Now, I have two kinds here today. Uh, this is the generic one. I don't know what brand it is. Uh, I got this off of eBay and it just simply says M42 to FX. It comes with a little Allen, Allen key because uh, most likely you will have to adjust this thing right here. Uh, you basically take this and uh, adjust it so that the top of your lens is aligned with the top of the camera. So you have to do a little bit of adjusting. Now the, this one is the KNF concept which of course, as you can see, is a little better in terms of build quality 
Uh, I would recommend skipping the generic and going for this one instead as it is well built and it doesn't need any adjustments uh, for the lens to align properly. Um, and it just looks, looks much better for a few more dollars. Now when mounting to the camera you just basically take your M42 lens which is a screw mount and you go screw it in and there you go locked in the top is aligned over here uh, I did have to adjust because it was not aligned it was kind of off to the side a little bit but uh, now you have an X mount and all you have to do is connect it mount it onto the camera and there you have it okay so let's take a look at the lenses themselves as you can see I have selected four different M42 lenses for my collection starting from wide to super telephoto the first lens I want to show you is the Asahi Pentax SMC or super multi coated Takumar uh, 28 millimeter. This is an f3.5 lens, which is not fast by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but it's a great travel lens because of the size. The uh, adapter actually doubles its size, but it's still pretty good. Now on the Fuji body, this is a 40 millimeter, which is a great walk around length, um, walk around focal length, and it is actually perfect normal. I got this one from eBay with the hood and a case and the metal lens caps which are really cool um, yeah it's a sweet looking hood uh, for around seventy seven dollars shipped and you can get it for even cheaper without these accessories but I personally like uh, to get the extra little accessories with it now the second lens is the very popular and almost legendary Helios 44-2 or 44 M uh, this is an this is a 58 millimeter f2 it's a fast portrait lens uh, which is equivalent to around a 58 uh, on the Fuji so this is a great uh, portrait focal length and this has that great looking swirly bouquet and I'll be showing you some sample images later but um, another great feature of this aside from the great build quality of course is that some lenses are actually stepless just like this one so you can change aperture on the fly very smoothly so from this is actually f8 as you can see and open it up to f2 and this is a great lens one of my favorite lenses uh, in this collection it's very sharp um, stop down a little bit and it has that great bokeh and separation now the next lens is a telephoto this is another Asahi Pentax SMC Takumar. This one is, oh, this is not the multi coated one. There is a multi coated version, but this is just the Super Takumar 135mm f3.5. There is a faster equivalent, but it's also much more expensive and uh, heavier. So, this is also a travel lens as I've chosen most of these lenses for. These will all be travel lenses. And I got this one with the metal lens hood, the metal lens cap, and the rear cap, and a case uh, for around 46 US dollars shipped. Now this is uh, an equivalent 200, around 200 millimeter. So this is a great telephoto. Now it's not fast as the other lens. Just like the other lens, it's not a low light lens but I deliberately did that for size and budget purposes it's perfectly fine for travel and for those longer landscape shots now the last lens here is the 400 millimeter another Asahi Pentax I'm sure you can see a, a little pattern here this is the SMC super multi coated Takumar also known as the Tele Takumar 400 millimeter f5.6 now this is a beast of a lens especially when you put it on a Fuji X body it comes with a built-in metal lens hood which is cool and I got it with the metal lens cap also has the tripod mount and I got this for around 
159 US dollars ship. This is my most expensive lens, but it's still a fraction of the cost of a 400 millimeter, which is of course a 600 millimeter equivalent on Fuji uh, crop bodies, which is awesome. Now this is a very heavy lens that should be on a tripod most of the time. Uh, it's also not really a fast lens, as you can see, it's a 5.6 uh, and I never intended to use it for night shooting or low light shooting anyway. So it's still a great lens and uh, it's the cheapest way to get to 600 millimeters uh, on a Fuji film body. Now of course each of these lenses come with specific pros and cons and I've listed all of those in the blog post uh, which you can find the link to in the in the description below so check that out as well. Now all in all these four lenses which take you from a 28 to a 400 or a 40 millimeter equivalent to a 600 millimeter equivalent plus the four adapters that attach them to the bodies uh, came to a total cost of around 360 US dollars. Now that is the price of about one modern lens so uh, it gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Okay, so as promised earlier, uh, I've now come out to do a little bit of shooting. And uh, we are in Tongyong, South Korea, which is of course my home in Korea. A uh, beautiful place. Uh, we've got a beautiful sunset going on here. And uh, the reason why I wanted to come out here to shoot is to show you guys uh, the lenses in action in a real world situation. And uh, also, uh, I wanted to show you how I would e use each lens uh, and their strengths uh, to compose a single scene. So this is all going to be one scene, I'm not going to move. I'm going to use each focal length to the best of its capability, hopefully. Before we get to the shooting, I wanted to show you some important settings that you need to set before you do any shooting with manual focus lenses. Uh, the first one is you want to make sure that shoot without lens is on all right so make sure that that is on because if you don't have that on uh, the, these vintage lenses don't have any electrical contacts or don't give any data to the to the camera so it's not going to let you shoot so that is important now the next setting you want to make sure you have dialed in is the mount adapter setting now this tells the camera what lens focal length you have you have mounted. Now this setting is actually optional. You can shoot photos without setting this, but if you want to remember what lens you used for a particular shot and uh, see that information in the EXIF data, then this setting is definitely a good one to have dialed in. Now, I'm starting with the 28 millimeter, so I'm gonna set that. Okay, and we are all set to shoot. So I'm starting with a SMC Takamar 28 millimeter, and uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the video footage as well. And I am currently recording, and that's also the reason why I'm on a video tripod right now, so that I can kind of pan around smoothly. So I've got this nice scene. Let's get focus. It's cold. So I would probably compose it like this, you know, get that rock in the foreground. Now this isn't really a serious shoot, uh, but uh, you know, just to show you guys how I would compose uh, with each lens. So here is a pretty good composition, I think, in my mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot. And as you can see, I used uh, the wide perspective of the 40 millimeter lens to show the whole bridge and a lot of the foreground. Basically the subject here is the entire scene itself. Moving on to the next lens, this is the Helios. So I'm gonna change this guy out. This is the Helios 58 millimeter F2. All right, so the lens is mounted and we're ready to shoot and there is actually a boat coming up so that's pretty cool so manually focusing stopping down 
with the wicked stepless aperture and uh, here comes the boat let's take a shot so the image is definitely tighter uh, we've got an 85 millimeter or so equivalent and uh, yeah that helped me to get in a little bit closer to the boat and you can definitely use the 85 millimeter for landscapes just uh, it's more for focusing in tighter on details and certain aspects of the landscape whereas the 40 millimeter would be the entire scene okay so up next we have the super tacomar 135 millimeter i just love how this lens looks on the xt1 like a little weapon all right so the 135 mm is mounted uh, this is the equivalent of a 200 millimeter lens uh, on full frame and uh, check this out see how we can use this I'm on f8 let's go to f11 I'm on f11 and see how sensitive it is to to bumps you're at 200 millimeter equivalent now so it's really sensitive to camera shake now uh, we don't have a boat coming right now but uh, let's see if we can find some details. So there, I kind of like that composition. Uh, it's really tight, 200 millimeters. Again, uh, it's okay for landscapes uh, if you want to focus in tight on a certain aspect of it. Uh, I like the sweeping lines of the bridge and also the color behind it. So this is how tight uh, 135 or 200 millimeter is. I just wish a person would come walking on the bridge or something but uh, it's pretty cold today so I don't think that's gonna happen or maybe some birds but anyway so this is more of an abstract shot I guess make sure you got focus again and let's take a shot All right, so our next and final lens for this test is the 400 millimeter SMC Takumar uh, f5.6. And as you can see on the X-T1, this is a behemoth of a lens. But uh, it's cool because I get to go to 600 millimeters uh, in full frame equivalent. So this is actually the hardest lens to focus among the four lenses. Uh, mainly because the focus throw is really long and just a little bit of adjustment gets you out of focus. Well, we got a boat coming. That is awesome. And that is a tiny boat. Let's try to get this guy. Okay, so this is not easy. He's a moving target. And, uh, Got a manual focus lens. Let's see if I can nail this guy. Now this is actually my least used lens because uh, number one, it's so large. And number two, I rarely uh, need to go in that tight. So, ooh, it's up there. So we've got a dragon head. This thing is basically a telescope. Good news, people. We have got a walker. Not a zombie, but uh, someone walking on the bridge. Here we go. So you can see how tight this, this lens is. See how powerful that zoom is. Using the focus peaking, I'm going to try to get him where we're near the curve the bridge boom you also want to try to get a mid stride because that looks cooler all right so that was pretty fun I enjoyed shooting the four lenses and uh, kind of challenging myself to make the most out of one seen using the four different lenses. Now before I end this video, I just wanted to give you some tips on how to choose your vintage lenses um, and make that purchase. Now the first tip is to decide what focal length you want and need. There's a whole wide range 
of focal lengths to choose from and uh, you know you can fill a hole in your current lineup or go for an entirely different focal length just to try it out and tip number two make sure you check lens reviews and check sample images online there's a great forum on the internet especially for pentax and smc takamar lenses it is called pentax forums and i'll link to that in the description below tip number three be on the lookout for good lens deals uh, on amazon or ebay now when you decide your focal length don't just pull the trigger and go for the first deal that you see. Sometimes uh, these prices will fluctuate because this is used gear and anything goes. So look for a good deal. When a good deal comes up, uh, and then you go for it. Tip number four, check the seller's description and images thoroughly. Now the good sellers will have very accurate descriptions of their gear and many detailed pictures to accompany the listing. Um, there you can see the condition of the lens, if there's any fungus, uh, look out for scratches on the body, on the barrel. Uh, just make sure the lens is in pretty good condition overall, inside and outside. Look for included accessories. Now, I personally like to get, uh, I personally like to get lenses that have the little extras like lens hoods, cases, and lens caps and I'm willing to pay a little bit more for those and the fact that they're included in the first place means that the previous owner probably took care of their gear better as well. So that's about it guys I hope you enjoyed this quick look into the world of M42 vintage lenses for your Fujifilm or any other mirrorless for that matter. Again you can buy adapters for most major manufacturers and you can have a lot of fun with these vintage lenses. It's also a great learning experience as you can try out many different kinds of lenses uh, without really spending too much money. So to wrap things up, as I usually like to do, I'm going to end this video with some sample images that were taken with these manual focus lenses uh, over the past couple of years. And I hope you enjoy those. Again, this has been Roy from Roy Cruz Photo. Thanks for watching and take care.